Run, Barry. Run. About back a year to The Flash Season 5, because we need to talk about it here on Comic Universe. What's up, guys, and welcome to the Web's Must See Comic and Nerd Culture Show. Welcome to the Comic Universe. I'm Jay. I've got a PhD in Nerd Culture, and I should know. I printed it out myself. Well, you guys, it is my favorite time of the year. It is the fall TV season, and more specifically, we are fast approaching the return of our CW shows. I know. The Arrowverse is back. I'm... You know, the Arrowverse fandom is still pretty strong, but, you know, among most of my friends, the hype has died down significantly, except for when it comes to Crisis. But, you know, I'm one of those people that is a ride or die with the Arrowverse, you know. Uh, That whole section of TV is where I got my, you know, first real start at reviewing TV shows. Um, you know, when I first started my channel about seven years ago, and man, look at me now, I'm reviewing like 25 different shows now. Thank you, Arrow, you put me on this path. But we're not talking about Arrow just yet, uh, we are actually doing a uh, follow-up to a series that Brian and I uh, started that I kind of pitched to him a while ago and I was like hey you and I are both Glee fans and you know we're both TV people and one of the reasons I definitely brought you on was to you know help even out the load when it comes to TV related content because you're a big TV fan as well and one of the shows Brian and I both love is Glee and I figured you know with these you know new seasons coming up and with it being like the final season of Arrow and different things like that I was like a really good series to do is you know a recap series where we can like catch people up if they don't have time to binge these Arrowverse shows on Netflix and they just want to know what happened so they can you know be aware of stuff before Crisis happens, because we know a lot of people are going to be watching Crisis, because that's going to be like the DC equivalent to Endgame. Like, at least that's what they're building it up to, and I can't wait to see, you know, how that plays out. So, I figured, let's go ahead and do this. Now, Brian has already covered the Supergirl uh, Season 3, or Supergirl Season 4. Um, you know, that's what you missed. And he's covered Black Lightning Season 2 as well. I'll leave those in cards up here, as well as a link to both of those at the end of the video as well. Uh, So definitely check those out if you haven't and you uh, get the chance to. Uh, But this time we are talking about The Flash Season 4. So obviously, you know, this will not be a recap of Seasons 1 through 4 because that would be way too long a video and way too big of a pain of the butt for me to edit and like I really don't want to sit here for four hours editing a 20 minute video so please have mercy on me I'm only going to be focusing on the end of season four and season five of the flash so I'm not going to be covering every single event either in Season 5, so I don't need any of you guys to be like, well, um, actually, Jay, you forgot about, you know, this little thing that Ralph did, you know, this this small interaction with Sherlock Wells and stuff like that. I'm going to cover as many of the major points as I feel necessary, but I'm not going to cover every single little detail. So let's go ahead and get started. So, at the end of Season 4, we have the big battle with the Thinker, you know, DeVoe. And, you know, it ends with his Enlightenment satellite crashing down, about to hit Star City. And Barry is about to, like, super speed punch the satellite and destroy it. But, he doesn't have enough momentum to shatter the satellite. And so... At the end of the season, we see time slow down and another speedster with purple lightning help assist Barry. And that shatters the Enlightenment satellite, which causes yet another catastrophe for Central City. I mean, Central City seems to be the epicenter of all these catastrophes, so, you know, what else is new? And then, later... 
once season five starts, we discover the identity of this second speedster. It is none other than Barry and Iris's daughter from the future, Dawn, I mean, Nora West Allen. Uh, Nora is a speedster that borrows Iris's old speedster costume from the episode that I hate with a passion. I'm not gonna lie, Run Iris Run, that episode review really, you know, got the Iris stands angry at me, but you know, I digress. Basically, this whole season is about, you know, Nora finally getting to spend time with her father because, you know, in her timeline, Barry disappeared. And you guys should remember, if you've been watching since season one, there's that, you know, paper headline from the Central City, uh, Central City Citizen, The Flash Disappears in Crisis. And there you go. So, we know for a fact that Ollie, if you watched the, um... Uh, Elseworlds crossover that Ollie made a deal with the Anti-Monitor to save both Barry, uh, Barry and Kara in order to you know, keep them around because the universe does need hope and if you guys know your Crisis on Infinite Earths, the actual comic version in Crisis Barry Allen and Kara zor both die so, you know, one plus one equals two. Ollie is basically trading his life for Barry and Kara. We'll come back to that when we talk about Arrow. But, uh, so, now Nora is just kind of trying to spend time with her dad, learn more about her speedster powers, get proper training as a hero. We learn more about her past, and we learn about her, like, strained relationship with Iris, because Iris has been hiding her meta powers from her, you know, ever since she was born, because she doesn't want her daughter to jump into that hero lifestyle because of how much like Barry she is, and, you know, Nora is all she has left, so she doesn't want you know, to lose her in the same way she lost Barry. So it's understandable, but future Iris is definitely, you know, not the best person. And Iris's whole arc throughout this is kind of bonding with Nora and learning she doesn't have to be that person. Although, I'm not gonna lie, as much as I enjoyed that arc, it was a tad bit repetitive because we kind of got a similar arc with Iris with the whole Savitar thing, but we're not going to mention Savitar because those were dark times. But overall, I really did like that arc, and of course, I love the arc of Barry, you know, learning what it means to be a father, you know, after, you know, losing his own dad and, you know, being raised by Joe and different things like that. Really enjoyed all that stuff. Honestly, this season really kind of brought back the core family values elements that were in, like, the first season of The Flash that I love so much. Now, I know a lot of people don't actually like Nora, which, you know, I, I can't get behind. Because, I mean, Nora, I'll admit, in the beginning was a little annoying. But she definitely improved as the season went on. And I really did enjoy Jessica Parker Kennedy's performance as Nora West Allen. Um, and she's probably one of the strongest parts of the season for me. Um... Iris finally getting back into being a journalist and officially starting the Central City Citizen. Uh, that's a tongue twister. Officially starting the Central City Citizen. And I'm not even going to edit that out because that is really hard to say. Central City Citizen. I dare you guys. Try to say that five times fast. You will not do it. You can't do it. But anyway. So Iris is finally back to being a journalist and not forcing herself into Star Labs. You know, she's actually doing what she's good at. So, thank God that was fixed. Um, I didn't really like the Wells that much this season. I mean, sure, look was cool and all, but not really all that necessary. I'm hoping from this point on, we don't just have a, you know, new Wells every season type thing. I got kind of bored with that after Harry, if I'm being honest. Harry is the best one. We don't need a different Wells every season, in my opinion. I mean, this is turning into more of a review than a recap now, but, like, I just want to throw that out there. Um, his whole subplot was, you know, owing a debt to the Flash because, you know, he tried to skip out without actually, you know, getting paid. And, like, you know, 
he basically scammed them and kind of screwed them over when it came to like hunting down Cicada, who is our main villain of the season, who, if I'm being honest, was kind of a weak villain. He kind of just sat there and really didn't do anything. And the really interesting villain that came into play later was his, you know, uh, adopted daughter, Grace, who was like a future female cicada. And she was actually pretty badass, but she came in way too late in the season. And by the time, you know, she came in, the season was already over. So like they wrapped her up real quick, tied a nice little bow around it. But I wish she would have been the main villain instead of Orlin, because Orlin was pretty boring and one-dimensional, and at least she had way cooler powers than Orlin. Um, one of my biggest complaints about this season, however, has to be Cisco once again, and I'm not gonna lie. Cisco, he used to be one of my favorite characters, and I still love, you know, Carlos Valdez. He's amazing and he's hilarious. But man, was Cisco at peak whininess this season? You know, his whole subplot was trying to figure out like if he really still wants to be vibe, and he has the whole plot with the metahuman cure, and he ends up finding a new girlfriend who, you know is basically Linda Park without actually being Linda Park because, you know, she's an Asian photographer um, who works for Iris at the newspaper. Basically Linda Park without actually being Linda Park. But, you know, not going to harp on that. Just saying we could bring Linda back, guys. Like, I, I want to see Linda again. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. Um... There's not really much more I can say, like, recapping Cisco stuff. Like, that's literally all he had to do, and it was kind of boring. Not gonna lie. Um, in the end, he decides to take the Metahuman Cure, which, honestly, I think is best, because I feel like Vibe was way too quick of an out for the Flash show, because literally, Cisco was a cheat code. He was like, oh, we need to get all the way over there? No problem, I can teleport you there. Oh, we need to solve this problem? Okay. I just let, just let me vibe, let me like just touch this like coffee cup that our villain was holding this morning when he got his morning coffee and I'll figure out his entire plan because I'll have a vision about it. Like I'm glad they got rid of that because honestly vibe is kind of a cheat code. So that's cool. But also I hope, you know, moving forward that Cisco, he, you know, just gets back to his roots and gets back to being, you know, the fun guy at Star Labs who, you know, is smart and, you know, tactical and, you know, makes great references and they don't just try to lean into it too much. Really enjoy him and I hope that they can, you know, bring him back. Now, one of the biggest improvements this season was definitely Caitlyn stuff. They're finally given Caitlyn stuff to do. Caitlyn had an entire arc where she lost Killer Frost thanks to DeVoe. And, you know, eventually she gets Frost back, they start to bond again, and they get to learn more about their past. And we get to learn more about kind of Frost connection to Icicle, you know, Daddy Icicle, and their whole thing. And they have a whole arc dealing with their family issues and reconnecting with their mother. It's really dope. And they also kind of set a precedent for, you know, Mama Icicle to kind of be a thing because that test at the end. So really excited to see what they have, you know, coming in store for Caitlyn. They really like developed her character more and finally gave her stuff to do. So that's great. Ralph, you know, I always love Ralph. I know there are a lot of people just, is just hit and miss with Ralph. I think Ralph is hilarious. Uh, they really start to let Hartley uh, Sawyer sh uh, shine a lot more. Uh, he's really funny. I, it seems like they let him ad lib more, which is a lot of fun. And uh, like I said, you know, they have set up a lot of stuff in the future for Hartley. I liked how everybody in the season had a different Ralph adventure. Barry and Ralph went undercover as bad guys. You know, Cisco and Ralph did the whole thing with Caitlyn and the metahuman cure. Uh, then we have Iris and Ralph going into the future to, you know, visit Thawne. 
And I didn't even talk about Thawne. So basically, the big the, um, secret of this season is that Thawne has been low-key training Nora. And he's kind of become fond of Nora. But, you know, his whole training of Nora was one giant chess move to get him out of jail. And now, Nora, you know, is his ticket out. But also, he wipes Nora out of existence because, you know, time travel, shenanigans, and the only way to save Nora is to have her tap into the negative speed force and, you know, become more like Eobard. And she refuses to become more like Eobard and holds fast to her father's legacy and, you know, teaches Barry for like the third time in a row, and I hope this time it sticks that there are consequences to your actions and sometimes you just gotta live with them Barry so let's hope that sticks um, I really enjoyed this season I know this was sort of like a combo review recap type thing and I didn't do as much recapping as like Brian did and it's funny because I kind of like directed Brian to do more recaps but I'm just mainly touching on the main events like of course you know we, we had like all this stuff with Thawne and you know Godspeed uh, showed up we got to learn more about Nora's origin story and Godspeed which I hope will come into play next season which is more than likely it's going to be like accelerated and then godspeed it's going to end up like in the comics being a co-worker of barry's so hopefully we'll see that because there's no way they made an entire suit and effect for a character we only see once so we're definitely going to see godspeed again so there's that also the other huge event that we got was the giant kaiju battle between you know gorilla grod and king shark that was probably one of the highlights of the season really dope giant pretty awesome for tv cg kaiju fight it was awesome honestly this season definitely you know got more back to basics and i enjoyed it a lot more than the previous season of the flash Personally, um, you know, that's what I liked about it. It was great. I enjoyed it a lot. And that's what you missed. On well, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of And That's What You Missed on The Flash Season 5. Let me know some of your favorite events of the season and what are you looking forward to in The Flash Season 6 coming up next week. Let me know all those thoughts and feels in the comments down below. As always, don't forget to leave this video a like to let me know you enjoyed it. And if you like what I do here and you want to see more from me, DPZ, um, Brian, or The Real Manos, be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified every time we upload new videos because we've got plenty of great content coming for you guys. And like I said in the outro card, I'll leave linked both Brian's previous episodes of That's What You Missed for both Black Lightning and Supergirl. So, you know, check those out for sure if you haven't already. But until next time, guys, this is Jay for the Comic Universe from Mr. Jay's Reviews. And hopefully next time, I'll see you guys in the universe.